guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock and it's time for a map test. This is rapidly becoming one of the most popular videos on the channel. So the question is, what is the map test? Well, very simply put, the map test is uh, where I show a trick to Matt, who works in my office. Now, Matt is not a magician. However, he is a very smart guy. He loves magic. Uh, and he's a performer. He actually does musical theatre. He's actually a musician. He has his own band, but he's not a magician. Um, but he loves magic. And he's one of those magicians. He's one of those uh, those people that will overreact and just really wear their heart on their sleeve when it comes to reacting to magic, which is fantastic. But he's also got a very analytical mind. He tries to work things out and he works in the sales department of my company. So he understands some concepts. Like if I said to him, I'm going to show you an ACAN, he would understand what that is. So um, it's very interesting to show him a trick and then try and get his thoughts on it afterwards. And uh, yeah, he, I, I've in the past shown him tricks that I thought were amazing and he's been kind of a bit subpar about them and I've shown him tricks that I didn't like and he's loved them. So it's a really interesting process to do. Now today I'm going to be showing him the new trick by Alakazam Magic called Imagine. Now I love Imagine. I absolutely adore it. Um, and I've been working it in my gigs for a while now. It always gets a really good reaction and uh, blows audiences away. So I really hope he's gonna like it, but you never know where he's gonna go with this sort of thing. But today, we're gonna do the map test on Imagine by Harry and Peter Nardi. So what is Imagine? Well, it was released a couple of weeks ago, and uh, you can go check out a review show special that I did at the time of release. Imagine is basically a reimagining of the mental photography deck. So it's a way of actually having a deck of cards uh, become completely blank on both sides. Uh, but because of how it's built, there's a lot of different possibilities in terms of structure, a lot of possibilities in terms of routines, and uh, Peter and Harry really thought this through to the nth degree. Now, one of the particular routines on there is the deck allows you to do a really clean mind reading thing where you just literally dribble down, they look at a card, you can tell them what the card is, and you can do that over and over again. It's repeatable, and it should be repeatable because it becomes more impressive each time. And it's not a force. I've actually spoken to magicians in the past, and they go, oh, yeah, you're just forcing the card. No, you're not. It's a different card every time. It's a different outcome every single time. Um, I love this because it allows me to get lots of different people involved. Uh, when I'm performing to a group, I can get everybody involved. And then I've got this wonderful kicker ending of having the deck turn blank. So I showed it to Matt. Let's have a look at the performance to Matt and what he thought of it after I showed it him. So I'm here with Matt. How you doing, Matt? What do you? Awesome. Are you well? I'm very well. Good. Uh, I've got a trick for you. It's a blank box. Another day, another map test. <laughs> another um, map test. So this is a brand new trick to come out. Okay. Literally brand new. It's kind of interesting. Cool. I'm going to get you involved in this, but I'm also going to get Michael behind the camera involved in this as well. Check you out. Dude. Now, I don't know if you know this. You probably know this because you see my desk, but I collect playing cards. I've got seen your lot. desk? Yeah. I've seen your desk, your house, the office. There's cards everywhere. The car. Like you look over there. The car park. You look over there. There's just cards everywhere, the right? The floor. I, co I collect playing cards. I like to think creative mind, messy, messy deck. Um, yes, there's, there's playing cards everywhere. So I collect everywhere. cards. Yes. And this, I've actually, uh, Sarah told me to be a bit more organised. So what I did is I went through every single pack of cards I own. And I took one card from each deck that my favourite 52 decks of cards that I've collected over the years. No way, that's good. And I put them together into one deck of cards and I put them in this box. So I've made like a, a bespoke deck of cards. An uber deck. An uber deck. And these are really cool because, check it out, look. It, no it just way. looks really cool. And, and they're from all different places. So uh, this one here is from Paris. This is actually not from Paris. This is actually uh, the Paris Hotel and in Resort. Vegas. From Vegas, yeah, yeah exactly. So, it's cool. Uh, it's nice, isn't it? Um, this is from a friend of mine that made it. Uh, he's into puzzles, uh, but also uh, a magician. And so he created this deck of cards to showcase his two loves of ma uh, magic and puzzles. Um, that's that's from... Uh, I just really like the logo. That's it's like not... a... a snap deck it's a, it's it's a deck of cards but it was it was weird uh, anyway the, the, i find them all really fascinating anyway and they're all different and they're all really cool and they're all awesome and, and so, a good so, idea, so. yeah i've made my own no good for playing cards but i mean great for <laughs> 
But I wanted to try and do some mind reading for you because in the past on Matt Test we've done some really complicated stuff, and I want yeah. to make it nice and simple. I was kind of inspired by your uh, by your question on the Magic Podcast to me and Lloyd a little while ago, oh, okay. where you talk about you know as a as a as a spectator you don't care about how difficult the trick is. Not really. To you, it's more about the impact of the trick. So I thought to make it very direct and very simple, and I try something. I'm going to show you the difference between mind reading and magic. Okay. And we'll start with mind reading. So I'm going to go through the cards like this. And as I do, I want you to say stop. Stop. There, are you sure? Can you look at that card? Yeah. Have you got it as well? Yeah. Now, I want you to see that's about as fair as you're going to get, right? Yeah. Look at me, concentrate on the card. I'm going to be very direct about this. I'm going to tell you your card's a red card. No questions, no fishing, no nothing. I'm going to tell you card's a heart. I'm going to tell you it's a low card. I'm going to tell you it's a six of hearts. <laughs> See, I took on board what you said, and I'm making it as direct and simple as I can. No faff, no questions. I remember when I did a trick on you a little while ago, you were like, oh, you were asking me questions, and it was leading the way. I'm not going to ask any questions. I'm just going to do this. Say stop. Stop. That one, oh, that's a nice card. Uh, look at that card, though. That's the one you want to look at. Yeah. You got it? Yeah. As I say, really simple, really direct. Um, it's a black card. Yeah. Yeah, it's a club. <laughs> it's a high card. It's a picture card. It's a king of clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, we'll try it with you. Look, I'm going to go down through the cards like this. What Michael, the hell? just say stop anytime you want to, Michael. Stop. No, before I get to the end. <laughs> so it's my fault. I should have told you this. I go very quickly. That's why I was signal for so many years. But I'm trying again. <laughs> uh, just say stop. Stop. That one right there. Have a look at that card. You got it? Yeah. Did you, you want to see it? Yeah. yeah that's it. Uh, we'll leave it down in the middle. Just like that. Now, your card, interestingly, is also a black card. It's very close to the card that you just picked. It's a black card. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a court card. It's a high card. It's even a king, but it's not the king of clubs. It's the king of spades. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> I could just keep doing this forever, but, but here's the thing. That's, that's mind reading, right? I want to show you magic, because there is a difference, okay? That's not, no, that's not magic, that's mind reading. I'm going to take the, uh, the eight, we'll take the eight of hearts for this trick, okay? We'll take the, uh, the eight of hearts. You happy with the eight? Yeah. Okay. I don't actually know, are you right or left-handed? Right. Hold out your right hand for me. I'm going to put the eight of hearts right there on your hand, okay? Yeah. Now watch. Did you feel that happen? No. I just showed you real magic. Okay. Do you know why? Why? Have a look at the other side. See, so that card turns blank, right? <laughs> <laughs> what? That's kind of weird, though, but let's go one step further. Look, just just snap your fingers like that. Now the back of this card turns <gasps> blank. Snap your fingers one more time. I'm not sure I want to. Go for it. And now every single card, all the way through, there were no cards. My card collection is gone. All we're left with are blank cards, no fronts, no backs, just a collection of 52 blank pieces of cardboard. And that, Matt, is Imagine. What just <laughs> happened? <laughs> Did you see it? Like. That's cool, right? What just happened? <laughs> How did that. I, I've got. No. You like it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me and Lloyd discussed on the podcast. Um, your question that you asked. And uh, to give people a frame of reference, if you don't listen to the podcast, Matt asked a question where he, of course, Matt's a musician, and he said, I'm a musician, you know, and sometimes musicians will play overly complicated um, sort of technical music to impress the other magician, uh, the other musicians, but really all punters want to hear is really cool songs being played that are really simple. And he said, is it the same thing true of magic? Is sometimes magic overly complicated just to impress magicians while laymen will keep it as simple as possible? This is an example of a trick that's almost, uh, it's about as simple as you can get. It's pretty much self it? it's not. It's I could teach you this trick and within five minutes you can do it. Just no, like you me. couldn't. You keep saying that and that's not true. It is true. It's very simple. You can see. Because I was like. You, you know how to spot when I'm doing sleight of hand and stuff. Yeah, you might I didn't not know see what I'm doing. But you can't just make a, a, an entire deck of cards. You've got no sleeves on often. There's, no, there's like. 
unless there was like a really quick switch if I looked at Mike or something, but you can't guarantee that's going to happen during a performance. So that can't, I've thought about that a couple of times. If you're doing stuff when I'm not looking. It's but you this direction. Yeah. But I mean, you can't guarantee that if you're in a group of people, no. that they're all going to like look away. Exactly there are ways the of time. directing people's attention in certain ways, but it's not foolproof. There's always going to be some people that are just going to stare at you going, right, I'm going to catch what you do. Yeah. So be, like, if you just switch that deck, the original deck for a deck of plain white cards, you'd have to put them somewhere. And I didn't see you switch them. And to be fair, the whole time I had it in my head that when you were doing the pick that card, that's that card. I mean, that's ridiculous. Because they were different every time. And then I'm like, maybe there's only like three. And like all these different decks of cards that he's got, obviously you're going to be able to pick. No, I could have You could make the faces, them all the though. same, couldn't you? So they could have all been the King of Spades. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But obviously they weren't because there was three different cards. And then he turned them over and the one on the top was the Eight of Diamonds or whatever it was. And then when he turned the pack over again, there was a three of clubs there. So they're not all the same. Yeah. You could have literally turned those cards yeah, over. I could, I could have gone through and shown you all of them. I didn't. And maybe that's something that I should have done at the beginning. I didn't think it was important. I thought it was more important to show the backs. But yeah, I could have absolutely have shown Showing the, the faces and showing that you've got one of each card. Yeah. Threat, that would, that, yeah, that would. Have... Yeah, I could very easily do that. That's a, that's a, uh, uh, that's a mistake by me as a performer as opposed to a, uh, a problem with the trick. Because that could have easily been done. And that genuinely could have been done. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So that's my first train of thought. Got another wing fact, straight away. One of the things I like about this trick is you can combine it with other things. So uh, I'm going to combine it with a trick that you've seen before. I'm going to do one more performance on you. We can stop okay. the camera for a minute. I'm going to do one more performance on you. Um, uh, and and uh, I'm going to show you a similar version of this trick, but it's going to go in a different direction. Okay. Okay. So let's let's just reset for a second. I'll make you close your eyes, and then we're uh, and then we're going to go for a second <laughs> performance. So there you go. I thought that was really interesting. Uh, and one of the things that I found so interesting is at no point did Matt want to examine the cards. Now you probably noticed in the performance I put the cards away in the box relatively quickly, um, kind of to get them out of sight, out of mind. But but and Matt's normally the sort of person if he perceives that something. Uh, can't be examined, he'll have to examine it because he does try to work stuff out. He didn't even consider asking to examine those cards. Uh, he didn't even say, hey, can I look at those cards, take them out of the case and have a look at them? That never even occurred to him. In fact, the thing that he went on and on and on about was, I didn't see Craig switch the deck. I didn't see him switch the deck, which kind of, uh, from my point of view, means that he was going down the route of me switching for a blank deck of cards. And and that's an important point because when you're dealing with gaff decks, a lot of the time people don't use gaff decks because they're worried. They're worried that uh, uh, people are going to see how the trick works or they're going to worry that people are going to want to examine the cards and the cards can't be examined. Well, in this situation, um, you've got somebody here who would absolutely have no problem calling me out on having something examined that can't be examined, but... He didn't, and it was totally not an issue for him, which I found interesting. Now, I'm going to show you another video now, another performance to Matt. And this particular trick is, once again, I'm doing Imagine. But, and I talked about this in the review show special, I'm surging from, I'm going from, um, uh, from Imagine into um, uh, the Quantum Deck, my Quantum Deck. Because one thing that I've realised is the quantum deck is absolutely perfect to go alongside Imagine because you can do the Imagine routine and you can turn the deck blank, but at the end you can force a card. So you can have a card forced and then you can just put the cards away. And you've got all the time in the world, it's definitely an offbeat, uh, to switch for a quantum deck and both decks come with blank boxes, which is amazing. And then you can say, well, let's try one more thing. You were thinking of a card. I'll make just that card reappear, and I'll make it reappear in a number that you're thinking of. Oh, and by the way, you can have a look at the cards, because at the end, the quantum deck's examinable, and they won't see any faces or any backs or anything like that. Um, and for me, this is one of, at least in my opinion, one of the best ways to use Imagine, because you're allowing the cards to be examined at the end. You're having one card print in a position that they you want them uh, you know they want you to have it come back. It makes the routine even more baffling. So I decided to show him that. Now, bearing in mind, I have done a review show special on the quantum deck with Matt, 
and uh, I, I've shown him the quantum deck before. He is aware of the quantum deck. Bear that in mind. So let's have a look at this. This is another performance of Imagine, but this time going into the quantum deck as a finale. Okay, so I'm back with Matt. He's had his eyes shut nice and tightly. Um, this, is, <laughs> this is probably going to freak you out in its own right, but this is the deck we were using earlier, and now it's back to... Uh... What the fuck? <laughs> Now, obviously, there's a rule in magic you should never repeat a trick. But I'm going to do it again because I want to show you a different direction you can go with this trick. All right? So, I'm going to... See, I wasn't looking, but I was like that, and you didn't touch that thing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, 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 but just, just, you know, you asked earlier <laughs> if, if I could have shown you the fa faces, and I was like, well, it's a, uh, obviously a mistake as me as a performer. Just to, just to show you that, you know, let me just show you the fronts and the backs. Of, oh, they are all different. Yeah, they are all different. Did you see that? You can see that they're all, they're all so different. So you've got like one of each. Yeah, I just took one of each card. It took me a long time. I'm sad, but that's what I do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, just that say... That makes it even more impressive. Yeah, well, just just say stop. Stop. There, are you sure? This one here? Yeah, you see different it? again. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, look at me. Uh, it's a red card. It's a high card. It's a uh, diamond. It's, it's the queen of diamonds. That's nuts. I know, right? That's even more nuts now I know they're all different. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to try something else. I'm going to try something else with this, okay? Okay. I, I want you to watch. Um, I, I Just say stop. Stop. Okay, can you can you look at that card for me? Yeah. I, I'll show it to the camera. Yeah. Can you see it? We're going to try and do something. Just to show people that are watching this that you can kind of go in a different direction. I'm going to... Uh, do you see that, that back design there? Yeah? Yeah. If I just rub... <gasps> but then if I if I rub the face of this packet onto the back of that one, that one turns blank. And then if I just literally do this. What the hell? Because I don't want you to think that, like you're looking away and I'm switching it because that's not the case. It's, it's genuinely not the case. It's why the deck... Like, Is that yours? No, it's not mine. It's by a guy called uh, uh, Harry and Peter Nardi. You know Peter Nardi. I was oh, talking no, about yeah. Peter Nardi. Well, Harry Nardi is his son. Got you, okay. And they run Alakazam together. And yeah. you know that I do a lot of work with Alakazam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I've never met him, but... but his, his, uh, actually, I want to try one more thing. So here's the thing. I asked you to do... Before I turn the deck blank, I asked you to think of a, uh, a card, didn't I? You said stop and you looked at the card. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so do you know how many cards are on the deck of cards? With or without jokers. Without jokers. 52. We're going to try and make your card materialise somewhere in the middle of this deck. Somewhere in the middle. Key point. It's not going to be at the top or the bottom. It's going to be somewhere in the middle. Your card. Okay. Concentrate. On what, was the, what was the name? Uh, actually, give me a number. Somewhere in the middle. Uh, the position in the deck. 27. You sure? Because that's my IQ. I mean, I think you're doing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Stop exaggerating, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. I'm going to try. I'm going to deal to the 27th card. All right? Okay. I'm going to deal to the 27th card. Why is he smiling at me? Because this is crazy. Because you just saw the deck turn black, right? Yeah. I'm going to deal to the 27th card, and your card is going to reappear. No, it's not. Yeah, and I'll even tell your card. You don't even have to tell me the name of your card. It will reappear face up. And I'll even tell you if it's the card, if the card that you're thinking of is the one I'm thinking of, it'll actually have a fairly normal back design because I love bicycle cards. And I think it'll, because you never saw the back design of your card, I think it'll have no. a red back, rider back, back design. Let's see. 27, yeah? Watch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. Isn't this exciting? 11, <laughs> 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. The tension mounts. It does. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, <gasps> 27th card is the three of spades. Oh, with a blue back, rider back. I was close. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously you can check the deck out and have a look at them. But that, was that the card you were thinking of? Reappeared right there in the position, right where you needed it. That one card reappeared, reprinted itself. And they're all just blank. Yeah. So where did everything go? <laughs> this isn't funny. Is it? <laughs> where did it all go? 
If you can look at the cards afterwards. Yeah, well, look. I know, I just did it. Yeah. So where the fuck did everything go? It's gone. Special invisible ink. It's been created by a guy in Japan. Works on heat. When you hold the deck, it, the heat activates the special ink. And it goes blank. You're not helping at all. Okay, I'm talking total <laughs> shit, but I mean... <laughs> I know that's not true. What the hell? Anything? No. Brilliant, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Just as clueless as you are. <laughs> that's nuts. Like, because you can see them. You can see the different backs, and and then he shows you, and they're all the fronts are different, but they've all got something on them. And then he flips the card over, rubs it, and everything just disappears. And then they all And then your card <laughs> just... That's like next level shit, that is. It's cool, isn't it? That's next level stuff. Mm. That's not your average trick, is it? No. It's really special. I was speaking about this on the podcast with Lloyd, and I think this is like one of the best tricks to come out in a long time. It's very, very good. Very good. Mm. I mean, you'd expect something that Peter's developed to be good as he owns one of the, if not the best magic shop in the entire country. Yeah. So you'd expect, he knows what he's doing, doesn't he? Oh, he's, he's, not he's got a head on his shoulders. He's not an amateur, is he? he knows, <laughs> he's been doing this for a while. He knows mate. what he's talking about. But that's like... To just make every single card in the deck just turn blank. Like right in front of you. Mm. With no card switches, oh. no deck, nothing. And it just everything just vanishes. And they're real cards because you can touch and feel them. There's like Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Mm. That's if you don't, you said it's brand new, so you haven't performed that out in the world yet. I'm doing it at my first. Well, actually, I have. I, I've been performing it for a while. Um, How if it's brand new? I because you're special. I have. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. There's certain advantages of being me. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've had it for a while, but um, uh, I'm I'm doing it on Thursday. You're doing it this Thursday as well. Mm -hmm. That's it's nuts. That's a good trick, isn't it? I'm doing it in a parlour show this Thursday, you see. I'm doing it for the first time in a parlour show, which is a show... Well, you know, you sell... I know what you know, yeah. you, you work sell in the sales them. department. Yeah, so I'm doing it in a parlour show. It's, it's been done, walk around, close up until that point, but... It would have been um, me that booked it. Yeah, 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 yeah you probably have. <laughs> Thanks for sending me to Doncaster. You're welcome. You're welcome. As far away from me as possible. <laughs> um... It's good. It's very good. I've absolutely not a clue. Any ideas? No clue. No, absolutely no idea. Um, and it's impressive. That's going to drive me mental. There you go. Because I go back to my desk and I sit there thinking about this shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as you think while you sell, that's okay. I'm still selling. <laughs> um, it, yeah. Passes uh, the mat test? 100 percent. Agreed. Yeah. Hundred percent. Brilliant. There you go. Brilliant. Well done, yeah. Peter and Harry. The, I mean, father and son team. They came I up think with me together. telling them well done would be very condescending, but it, to me, that is a fantastic yeah. trick. Imagine. Peter and Harry not. Imagine. Yet. Cool box, too. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. It's very good. I'm, yeah, impressed. There you go. So I thought that was absolutely fascinating as well um, for a couple of different reasons. First of all, he never picked up on the fact that it was a quantum deck. He never mentioned the quantum deck. He never picked up on the fact that it was a quantum deck. He was just like, oh, wow, you know. So, so that was the first thing. He knows what the quantum deck is. He didn't even consider that that was a thing. He thought it was just an extension of the original routine, which is great because, I mean, it was the most blatant deck switch in the world. I just literally switched one deck to the other. But that's the thing. I mean, uh, uh, my attitude when switching decks or doing stuff that you consider ballsy, especially in an environment like that, is you can just get away with it. You can get away with anything as long as you can read the audience. As long as you can manage an audience, then it's not a problem. The, the, um, the amount of stuff that you can get away with um, is ridiculous. Now, in the real world, 
I would actually do a switch that makes, uh, you know, that's a little bit more, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, a little bit more scrutinizable, right? But, but in a social environment like that, it's totally not an issue. Now, uh, so he didn't pick up on the quantum deck. And at the end, because it was the quantum deck, I, I just pushed the cards forward and said, you can look at them. And then he looked at the cards and he went, wow, I can examine them as well. Now, I don't know if that means that he, I, I don't know what that means, uh, but it was nice that I could actually do that. Maybe because this was shot after I did the first, you'd never do those two routines back to back normally. You'd never do imagine and then do imagine again and do it into the quantum deck. So this is kind of a weird performing situation to be in, but maybe in the time period between the first trick and the second trick, he was trying to work it out in his head and he's like, oh, I wish I could have examined those cards. So the second time when I showed it to him, he's like, wow, I can examine them. That's really cool. Um, outside of that, I mean, you saw his reactions to the trick. The reactions that Matt had to this trick are exactly the same reactions that I get to this trick every single time I perform it. Um, it always gets killer reactions, like always gets killer reactions and people always love watching it. Um, it's a really strong trick. Now, I've spoken to a couple of people that have uh, seen the trailer for Imagine and have gone, yeah, it's just a, it's just a uh, mental photography deck. In my opinion, this is just the best mental photography deck in the world. First of all, saying yeah, it's just a mental photography deck, mental photography is absolutely amazing. It's such a great trick. But this allows you to do a full routine before you go into mental photography, which for me is worth its weight in gold. So, you know, bottom line is you've seen the you've seen the footage. This absolutely one hundred and fifty percent passes the map test. I knew it would. I gave it a great review on the review show special, uh, and and it passes the map test one hundred percent. So there you go. That is uh, Imagine by Peter and Harry Nardi. You can get exclusively from Alakazam Magic. So thanks very much for watching, guys. That's another map test in the bag. Now, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I will be back again tomorrow with another video. And if you haven't already done so, please go and check out The Net Tricks. It is www.thenettricks.com. It's something I'm very proud of. And me and my team are working round the clock to make it the number one streaming platform for magicians in the world. And uh, we're incorporating a whole bunch of new features, a whole bunch of new ideas. And it's already good, but it's going to get even better. If you want to try it out, please do so. If you want to support the channel, go to the Netflix. Thanks so much for watching. I'm going to be back again tomorrow with another video. I'll see you again. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm -hmm.